All right, let's talk about mortise cylinder cams. Go over the basics behind them, as well as a few servicing techniques related to them. Got a mortise cylinder here, keys in it. And on the back side, this silver portion right here is the cam. The cam's purpose is to transmit the motion of a turning key or plug to interface with the lock that's housing the cylinder. So in other words, I've got a cylinder, I've got a key, I go into my door, put the key into the cylinder, and I turn it. Well, I've got to find a way to transmit that motion to make the lock either lock or unlock, and that's the cam's purpose. Now, not all cams are the same in more ways than one. The lock housing the mortise cylinder will dictate the kind of cam being used. And as a result of dozens and dozens and dozens of different types of mortise locks, uh, you get as many varieties of cams. For example, here is a Corbin Russ one cam. It's for the Corbin Russ one ML 2000 series mortise locks. Here is a Schlage cam for the Schlage L9000 series mortise locks. And then I'll finish up with the, which funny enough is the one on this one as well. I'll finish up with probably two of the most popular cams in North America at least. First is the standard or Yale cam. You ever go to a multi-level building and see those Herculite glass doors, those big eight foot tall glass doors, sometimes taller, and they've got a bottom and a top rail, metal rails. Uh, if you look at the floor, about an inch off the ground, if you see a cylinder, that's a floor bolt, and more than likely it's using that standard cam. And then finally, what I think is probably the most popular cam in North America, Adam's right cam. If you go to any strip mall in America, as well as some commercial spaces, you'll see an aluminum storefront door, you know, aluminum rails and styles, and then glass in the middle. Well, more than likely, the lock inside of that door is what they call an Adams Wright style mortise lock. May not be manufactured or made by Adams Wright in each case, but it's the style that they popularized. Um, things like latch locks, dead bolts, hook bolts. Um, those Adams Wright cams will work for those locks. Now, in addition to different sizes and shapes and all of that, we've got some other nuances that would create differences between the cams. This particular Adams Wright cam right here is made by Medico. And then here is an Adams Wright cam made by Corbin Russwin. And then these final two are Adams Wright cams made by Schlage. So a few things here to notice. Number one, the screw patterns aren't the same for all of them. In the Medico version, we've got a screws at roughly two and seven. On the Corbin Russman version, they're at three and nine. And then on the Schlage, we've only got one screw. One's kind of at three o'clock and the other's right in the middle. So, can you use different cans for different locks? Sometimes you can, but oftentimes you can't. And this is a great example of why. Move those out of the way. Uh, here's one more example I'll show you. You can see that of the ones I've shown you so far, they've kind of got a closed bottom. In other words, there's metal at the bottom. Here's another example of something you might run into. This is a Sargent cam, an older one. You can see it's got a cutout. And that's because on the design of those mortise cylinders, the key would extend a little bit beyond the plug. So if you had metal there, wouldn't be able to get your key all the way in. Now with the basics out of the way, we'll go over a few servicing techniques related to mortise cylinder cams. Not much to them, I know, seems pretty straightforward. Um, there's only two screws, you just remove the screws. 
change your cam, rekey, then put your cam back on, tighten the screws. Seems pretty straightforward, right? A lot of times it's not. So there's two reasons that wouldn't be. Number one, the screws are very, very tight. So in other words, I'm putting my screwdriver in here and I'm turning and I'm turning and I'm turning and it's not coming free. What do I do? Okay, there's a few different things you can do. Start from easiest. Um, number one, take your ball peen hammer and just strike the back of the cam a few times. We're gonna hit right on the back of the cam. We're not gonna hit at the top. We're not gonna hit anywhere else on the cylinder and potentially damage it. We're just gonna give two quick blows to the back of the cam. And more than likely, that's gonna free up whichever screw or both screw, it's gonna free up that binding, which is gonna allow us to now turn it. Okay, well, that'll save us there. Another option you may have, which is pretty much doing the same in a way, is an impact driver. And let's see if I can make it. That clicking right there, what it's doing is while it's turning, it's hammering down onto the screw. So in a way it kind of alleviates that pressure or the binding temporarily on the screw while turning. And oftentimes that's all it takes to get it out of that bind. So you can use one of those. Another dedicated tool is this one here, manufactured by Kedex. It's a big tool, kind of hard to get into the full frame of the video, but basically place your cylinder inside and mesh the bit with a screw on the back. It's got a rubber pad here to provide some friction so that while you're turning it, it's not really going with you. And then what you're going to do, so I'll pull the camera up a little bit. This wide area allows you to put it either your whole hand or your butt on your hand, whatever's comfortable for you. And you can press down and bear a lot of that weight while turning. And hopefully that'll provide you with enough force to get that screw started and loose. Now, if you don't have an impact driver and you don't have one of those Keydex screws that I just showed you, and that hammering on the back didn't work, we can create a poor man's impact driver with a screwdriver and a hammer. Now, obviously it's best if you can put your cylinder into a vise or something like that. I'm just gonna hold it in my hands to show you the concept. But with the screwdriver, interface with a screw, you're gonna hit while turning. So in other words, I'll put it out of camera side, but while I'm turning, I'm hitting. And hopefully that'll free it up. Because basically what you're doing is replicating uh, the impact driver. So that takes care of screws that are way too tight to pull off with just a, a screwdriver in your hand, which is pretty common, especially if it's straight from the factory. Um, they don't mess around. Second thing you're likely to encounter are strip screws. Now I know this is a perfectly good mortise cylinder and perfect screw, so if, just imagine if they weren't, what would we do to get those screws out? Well, number one, if they're not too bad, um, you can just take a rubber band place it over the tip of your screwdriver and then stick your screwdriver in as if you were normally going to screw them, unscrew or tighten them or whatever. And hopefully that little bit of rubber provides uh, the missing material as well as the friction needed to grab on to the screw to remove it. So there's one option. Option number two, if you have a Dremel, you can cut a small slot, preferably in line with one of the existing ones, to create basically a standard tip or a flathead screw. Don't want to remove too much and start cutting into the cam or cut so much away that we actually break off the head of the screw, but we want to cut that channel so that we can go behind it real quick and follow it up with a standard, trip, standard tip screwdriver. Uh, it's a lot cheaper and easier to replace an entire screw than it is a tire mortise cylinder. 
Second thing you may have to do is actually drill the screw out. And I'll remove this screw to show you what I'm talking about. When you're drilling one of these cylinder uh, cam screws out, we're only interested in removing as much of this conical portion as possible. Not gonna be removing the shank or the entire screw. Just wanna hit on this conical portion. Here's why. Let's say we're drilling it, we find an appropriate size drill bit, we start drilling the head. Drill down until you just hit on the cam. Don't wanna to remove too much of that material, don't wanna remove any of it if we can help it because we wanna reuse that cam. But once we've got that material removed, if we can imagine this is the screw we just drilled, we can start prying from other portions of the cam. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna deform that metal, which has been weakened by the amount of material we remove. You know, if you've ever taken a paper clip and bent it back and forth a few times, that's metal fatigue. And when it breaks, well, that's basically what we're trying to do here. So if we remove enough of this material, we can start prying and we can eventually overcome it to the point where we're able to remove the cam. And then more than likely, you're just gonna have a little piece of the, the shank and the head still there. So most of that will be gone. And then you can just take a pair of vice grips, hook onto whatever's left and manually remove it. So that's basically all there is to mortise cylinder cams. Not much to them, but sometimes when you're re-keying or replacing a cam or whatever, um, it's not straightforward as far as removing them. So hopefully you learned a few things and that helped you out. Um, but thanks.